Evil Light is already here, and we just helped him. Anduin saw it coming. That's right. That's right. I've been talking about this evil light and the shit that's going down, and the true light, the flaming light that we're going to get to see in Hallowfall from these new paladins, and how Anduin's going to learn from them how to harness the true light. What's going on with the light we currently know? Let's find out. Calia and Terelian currently control most of the Eastern Kingdoms, they're pulling all the strings, and what they both have in common is that they're not your regular light followers. Both were transformed and light forged directly by a powerful Nauru, having their DNA completely changed, making them susceptible to being turned on a switch. Of course, no indications of them being evil yet, but there were also no indications- No indications of them being evil yet, but when they found Anduin, did you notice how, um... Greymane was like, don't say anything. Don't say anything to uh, Torellian yet. I thought that was interesting. I thought that was a telltale sign that they don't really know much about Torellian, maybe. They don't trust him fully. I don't know. But it, it was Not interesting. Evil yet, but there were also no indications Yrel would become the evil light emperor yeah, either, and that she would enslave all of Draenor. Interesting enough, Anduin was just cited in 10.2.5, and Gen didn't actually want to inform Torellian for some reason. When the real reason Anduin lost his light isn't because he did bad things, but because he understood that he was a pawn of the light as much as he was a pawn of the jailer, and he no longer believes in this cosmological force. This That's right. has been a controversial thing. For what does that tell you when when Anduin compares freaking domination magic to light magic? I mean, if that's what he's doing. Now it seems more like honestly he just lost his touch with the light and he's trying to figure out why. But uh, I think it's because it's not it's not the real light. He's about to find the real light in Hallowfall. A while, but are we actually in for a light evil scenario on Azeroth? If you guys want to buy I Total War, are. Elder Scrolls, or any other game, you can get them at great prices with my Gamevo link. You can also get anything Warcraft related, gift cards and software, and oh, all yeah. the low market prices. Best of all, if you add my code Doron, you can get an even bigger discount, so make sure to oh, check out shit. my link in the description and he get some code. amazing deals with Gamevo. I know what you may be thinking, wow, yet another Terrellian bad what if the light is evil theory, I agree, I mean this really is getting super old, and it has been something we've been talking about for years now with nothing really happening, but some new changes happened since the Warbited announcement and 10.2.5 that I do think we should take into account that kinda shifts the whole perspective. So just for the start, consider this, the alliance is currently being led by Terrellian, with him right. holding great power at the lower part of the eastern kingdoms, sure. and all the way at the our part of the Eastern Kingdoms, Calia Manatil is ruling the Forsaken, that just almost single-handedly returned Gilneas to the Horgan, as if she's almost coordinating with the Rallian. Now you gotta keep one thing in mind. These two incredibly powerful figures are not priests, they're not paladins, they're not light followers or anything of the sort. They are light enhanced characters, two hand-picked characters directly enhanced by very powerful Naru. Like literally, they change their DNA to the core. Terelian was said to have long past mortality, and the only reason he's alive is because Zera blessed and light forged him personally, similar to how she tried to do the right, same I mean, thing. He fought in a thousand years war, right? So yeah, he's certainly very old. I didn't think about the fact that it had changed his DNA. I always saw Tyrellian as just another paladin, but I guess he is special in that way. So that's interesting. Uh, it was funny. I forgot to post. What was it? It's really. It isn't really that hard for the WoW economy. Oh, okay. Yeah, the light. Believing in the light is inherently good. Look, that's the whole thing about it, the light being good. Is we did we used to believe that. We did. And then it was, it, it kind of faded away, but then recently Metzen talked about it in, in BlizzCon. He was like, oh, we're going to band together with the light to vanquish the, uh, the void or whatever. He drops like a line like that. And I was like, wait a minute, is the light good again? What's going on? And then this Hallowfall light showed up that's supposedly like a flaming light. And I was like, maybe that's the light he's talking about. Maybe he's not talking about the light as we currently know it. But I guess we'll find out because the way he talked about it, it sounds like the light was good again. Then, on the other hand, Kalia Manatil actually died and is literally the only light forged undead in existence that we know of. A powerful Naru literally came down and resurrected her personally through Anduin. Just for the context, keep this in mind. I mean, half a Lordron died, so many powerful characters, so many devoted light followers, Uther, Tyrion, yet none of them were resurrected <laughs> by a Naru or handpicked personally or light forged. So I know this may be a little bit out there, but seeing that the light is sort of ever knowing, I mean, remember how very 
villain can see the future and he's empowered by Naru. What if they knew they would come in positions of power in the future as that is why they decided to blast them in order to have pawns in powerful pawns, places yeah. they could later turn to their side. They might have also seen Illidan doing something big in the future that we are yet to see which is why they tried to light forge him as well. I know immediately like what you may be thinking I mean sure could be possible but this light evil thing is not really based on anything. There have been zero indications that Irelian or Kalia are bad or have barely shown any sort of like crazy fanaticism. True. However I want you to keep one thing in mind. Do you guys remember Yorel? You know, Yorel, the crazy light emperor from alternate Renor that yeah. destroyed most of the planet and enslaved and light forged all the races by force like you had no choice. Either you want to join the light or not. Do you guys remember like any indications that something like this would ever in like a million years happen? Well, I don't and I think the reason for that is that the light and the Naru in particular are able to activate this when they need to and then they're it's going like to... It's like a active, like a Order 66. That's what it sounds like he's describing. Like the light implants itself into all these people's brains and then just conflict the switch instantly to turn them crazy it totally it totally sounds like an order 66 changed in an instant that would kind of be cool if that happens we are kind of screwed if this does happen we got two most powerful figures on the eastern kingdoms setting the ground for a light invasion we already know a void invasion is definitely coming in midnight we know the light is going to join in on the fight but yeah i don't feel like the light is going to come and save us i think they're going to come to fight the void and we might just be in the way i know this might once again be a little bit out there but let me yeah. mention a few things that you just added to the game that might be a further indication of this first of all obviously you know the light humans and light crystal are going to be a huge part of the war within and yeah definitely i think this is also going to be the transition to midnight because the invasion is happening through the sunwell which is technically naru empowered now without a doubt the light crystal is 100 something naru light related at this point in time Agreed. we can of course only speculate but we could also use old lore to kind of connect the dots first of all the light is not just a saber the light is definitely a predatory force we had seen this on multiple occasions one is the zero tried to light force yielding by force second is the imprisoned Illyria for even trying to understand the void most importantly we got a hint from the shadowlands where we had revened red an entire portion of the zone that was ravaged by the light directly like permanently damaged yeah, the true. states that this was a revenge attack for the, the light freaking destroyed that whole zone and yeah going back to shadowlands uh, dk myth you make a great point on the light and domination magic we totally helped the primus reform the Helm of Domination using light magic. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We put a freaking tiara of wills made of, from like light domination magic. Very interesting. Who's now basically running the entirety of the Shadowlands. That, that, there is something to be said for what we did in the Shadowlands. That shit's going to come back to haunt us in some way. But I most definitely believe that, yeah, there's some kind of weird domination light magic being used now. I wonder if they will um, will not do Horde versus Alliance, but Light versus Dark thing, and everyone picks a side. It may be. I don't know. I can't imagine how that would... I mean, they could do the pick a side stuff and like what they did with Sylvanas, right? Where like if you chose the quest line to do it a certain way, you were either still loyal to her or not, and that would affect what cutscenes you got. But like being able to flag somebody or kill somebody because they chose a different side, that would be a complete rewrite of the engine. I can't imagine them doing that. Would be cool, trying to install his Natrazim agents into the light, but it just goes to show you that the light can also be offensive as well. I mean, the document stated that they decided to put the Natrius in his place. Now, another True. I mean, there are also people, by the way, who still have the freaking gift of Nazoth, like they never cleansed it. So they also, they chose a side already. They chose Nazoth, they chose the Void side. Important thing from the past is the Naru themselves. Thought. You all know the void and the light cycles, and how a Naru, as a pure being of the light, can turn into a complete being of the void. One of the triggers for this mechanism is when a Naru is injured, and then over time it slowly transitions into a void god. Well, what right. we've seen is the light crystal in Castle God slowly started flickering into a void being and is very close to completely turning into pure void. Like they very clearly stated that eventually it might just completely turn into the void. Now, one of the theories is that this could really be an injured Naru that is slowly turning into a void god, and that the reason it got there is because the light might have invaded Azeroth at one 
point in ancient history and we never really knew anything about it. The other theory is that Zelatad could have had her hands in this and is the one that is corrupting the shard and filling it up with the Maybe. void, which is definitely also possible. If this is not enough... We did see in Season of Discovery, she's standing next to a giant shard that fell from the sky, which is how the Hallowfall citizens describe this big crystal, that they had a dream of a star falling from the sky. So she could be the one corrupting it, who knows? It could be one of those original light shards, as the Chronicle stated that when the universe was created, light shards were flung all across the universe and they reached a whole bunch of planets. However, it is clear the light can be quite bad and only has one singular goal, like the goal, the right way, which is, of course, their way. I think the only reason we've seen mostly the good side of the light until this point is because cosmologically it aligns really well with life, so generally we have the same goals. But when these goals start collapsing, Lighting, which I think they will soon, we will see the true face, much like how we're going to see the true face of the Titans. Another interesting fact is that Kelia was specifically resurrected by an arrow called Sara, that is the only Naru that we know of that managed to revert back from this Void God cycle into yeah. the Light One. I don't really know how to pinpoint that exactly, but I do feel like that is going to be relevant soon as well. However, back to the data, we had recently gotten actual information on Anduin and some on Trillian in 10.2.5. Originally, Anduin and doing sighting and the search for Gan was seen at the start of Dragon Fight, and yeah. now we got a follow up on his return. And Gan was informed that Anduin was sighted around Ratchet, and all of this seems like a setup for the war within, as he's obviously going down to Silithers, which will happen in the expansion, yeah. which we can see in the cinematic. However, what I find incredibly interesting is that when asked whether to inform the King of the Alliance to about saying. Anduin, they didn't want to do it, and they wanted yeah, to. Yeah, it was out. very weird that he didn't want to tell Torellian, at least to me. What the hell is Torellian wearing under his armor there? Looks like, is that a clipping or something or something weird? Why does that look like some void clothes? I'm, I'm looking at this shit too hard, but that looks kind of weird. I don't know what's under his armor. They didn't want to do it, and they wanted to wait. <laughs> That's now, me reaching this was super hard. Strictly though. for technical what reasons, the as in they don't want to bother the king with incomplete information. I think it is hard to say at this point in time. However, there could definitely be more to it. You all know and have seen from the Warbird cinematic that a huge style to the storyline is about Anduin and him losing his powers of light. What is also interesting is that, as the previously stated, Anaru was involved in the resurrection of Kalia <laughs> Manitil, but it was actually Anduin Brin who had done the resurrection and created her, essentially. Due Doing the bidding of the Naru. Now, what yeah. if the reason Anduin lost his powers isn't because he feels bad for I what did he did in the Shadowlands and he's doubting himself, but what if he's really doubting the light and what the light really stands for? Like his time with the Jailer and him understanding how the universe really works, which is a really unique perspective that barely anyone else has, and it has opened his eyes that he was a pawn of the light as much as he was a pawn of the Jailer and he didn't even know about mm -hmm. it. Now, if Anduin really has this perspective, yeah, it's interesting, like, Anduin went through this whole domination thing, and the difference between, like, domination magic straight up and what the light does is at least with domination magic, you are you are somewhat conscious that this is happening. Like, Anduin was conscious of the fact that he was being dominated, right? Like, he could, he could tell, he felt it. He knew he was being pushed to do things against his will. But with light domination, the interesting theory about it is you wouldn't know it's happening. It's almost like it's, it befriends you, and then convinces you and slowly makes you feel like you are the one making these decisions when in fact that you could be just being dominated into it. That's what's more, I don't know, corruptive or corrosive about light domination, I would think, than regular domination magic. It's an interesting thought, and it probably fucks with your mind. That's what's really getting to Anduin right now is how messed up he feels inside perspective, well, that is not exactly something Terelliad would want him spreading as that would completely undermine his goal and the goal of the light. Also, keep in mind, Anduin is actually a priest or even a paladin at this point in time. He isn't actually lightforged by Naru, while Terelliad has like his DNA rewritten by the light and he's definitely working for them directly. This means that one is a direct servant that can very easily be turned into a pawn. Furthermore, we recently had the Scarlet right. Crusade leader turning into a huge light element monstrosity and proclaiming that the light will purge our stain from the world very yeah. similar language and wording that a cosmological force would use kind of similar to what the titans would say the 
only contradictory bit is that Cadillac has been fighting these guys, the Scarlet Crusade, even though by this theory, I mean, they should be on the same side. However, as I said, I don't think Calia is evil, at least currently, but I do think Not it yet. is entirely possible she could be turned on a switch, which is why there have been no actual, like, evil indications. Also, the Light might have realized that the Scarlets are useless, so they let them get destroyed, as Calia is a much more powerful uh, player Scarlet's they could use. However, even... I actually Scar don't like what they did with the Scarlet Crusade. I feel like they've just kind of turned them into a meme, where they're just like this very easily killable, dumb uh, group of people. I kind of wish they made them a bit more powerful. You know, a bit more intimidating. You gotta remember, when we first went into the Scarlet Monastery, like those level 37-ish to 40 days, that shit was hard, man. They were intimidating. They were a force to be reckoned with. Now they're just, I feel like they're just a meme. Like, we just kill them for no reason. Like, they're just, they're just part of a, a little quest line. Should have been made tougher. Scarlet stuff kind of supports this theory. Like, by all accounts, they're, they're team rocking, they're fanatical, yeah, exactly. but they still use the light to a great degree. Like, you don't need to be good or virtuous to use the light. You just need to believe it is the one force and the only way forward. So, there's really no type of morality to be able to use the light. This is why I think Anduin actually lost his powers. Like, Scarlet's he done a ton of terrible things over the years as well. But the difference is that through the jailer, Anduin might have realized that he was a part of the light this entire time. Now, I don't necessarily think the yeah. light is going to turn evil. Personally, I think there's going to be a split and we will get the actual good side of the light and the fanatical one. I Remember, agree. Utenaxian is fall. still a very powerful agent. Gidel can be used as well, but there are good sides of the light too. It is also possible that agents of Utenaxia may try to convert to Relian and Kalia, but they fail and the plot gets exposed. However, something big with the light will 100% be happening soon. Thank you for watching, check out how crazy Great Azeroth's one. prison mechanism really is by clicking on the screen and check out my video on ancient Greek colonies in Spain by clicking on the screen as well. See you next time. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play on that light story, no doubt. The the whole Hallow Fall, this ancient race who practices this flaming light that can like power blimps and everything, it obviously releases heat, that means and stuff. It's a it's a new kind of light. And I think that's gonna lead us into a ton of light lore. Midnight expansion gonna give us a bunch of void lore. We're going to get a whole new uh, perspective on the light and what it is. Uh, whether it's all like what Doran described, I don't know, but we'll, we'll find out. Very cool video.